15. Till date, not even one has come up because of the some restriction. The, the people at the airport, they don't want this thing to happen. So ultimately, it's, it's hampering the exports, growth of exports. So those all things we have to see. But on the whole, like KYC and other things which he has announced, that, is, that will really help the exporters to you know, make sure that the things move fast. Uh, this one is the first budget in Amrit Kal, considering the 25 years of transition which we are aiming at for the next 100 years of independence. And uh, she has also mentioned that the world has recognized India as a bright star, considering the kind of uh, scenario we faced during the COVID situation, uh, the pandemic which arise, uh, was it was not only in India but everywhere in the world, the global economic slowdown which was faced by countries across the globe. At the same time, India seeing the economic growth at 7%, what the finance minister has mentioned. Where do we see India heading? If we talk about the next one year, and of course G20 presidency and of course the SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summits, which India will be hosting, and uh, various other events which are being organized under the presidency, one year, and the position. No, uh, really, we must applaud the finance minister for uh, maintaining fiscal discipline. The Honourable Finance Minister today and uh, about the various other factors uh, which you would uh, talk about, particularly the GST which all eyes were on various aspects related to GST and considering the huge demand from the people also. As uh, far as the aviation, I take uh, uh, the other comments, but what will be your com comments on this? See, from GST perspective, you didn't heard any word from Honorable Finance Minister, right? <laughs> Only customs, customs, rightly said so. And GST is growing by 24.8% year on year. We started with 70 lakh taxpayer and we are having today 1.4 crore taxpayer under GST regime. And this January 23 data, 1.56 lakh crore rupees, second highest ever when we got one tempering of evidences that is again being decriminalized. And when you fail to supply information to the GST department, was one of the prosecution provision got decriminalized. <laughs> so these are laudable ones. Have you heard of compounding in GST, compounding of offenses in GST? We are funding Lot 38, which is existing provision CGST Act. The existing limit is 50% to 150% of tax amount. Can you think of if your tax amount is 100 rupees, they may levy 150 rupees for compounding that. Who will go for it? But laudable one, it is now being decreased to 25% to 100% range. Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Ramanji today. Uh, she spoke about the being populist, considering that the 2024 is uh, election, general elections are around the corner. How do you see and perceive this budget? I think overall a good balanced budget given the constraints. Uh, fiscal consolidation with GDP uh, going at about 6.5% and a budget deficit of 5.9%, so that path is good. Market borrowings are a little lower than last year, which is welcome. I think last year the number of, was about 16 lakh crore. The big positive is the continued trust in CapEx. I think uh, a 10 lakh crore outlay will certainly keep the economy going. Of course, um, I think we were expecting a little more on exports, especially maybe some PLIs for um, employment generating sector, generation sectors. We didn't see that. Hopefully, we'll see that in the coming days. Um, expanded outlay on housing is most welcome. A um, bit more could have been done for MSMEs while extending the credit guarantee scheme is welcome. But uh, really, that's a sector which needs more support. Uh, other than that, the priorities of focusing on youth, agriculture, digitization, uh, biogas, and green energy, etc., are all very welcome. And uh, let's hope uh, we saw a great increase in indirect taxes last year. I think Bimal Ji was seeing almost 25%. I think the trick will be this year to expand the direct tax base because the. 
coming to you, Mr. Mohit Jain, the chair of MSME committee at the PhD chambers. Uh, Finance Minister has called the MSE sector as the growth engine of the Indian economy. And apart from that, uh, she has promised that the assistance will continue to be given to this particular sector. 1,000 crore infusion for uh, investments for the capital subsidies uh, would definitely help the uh, MSME. And the 1% subsidy she has spoken about, we'll see the how the scheme is totally framed out when it comes up. But uh, I think uh, as uh, MSME, we would have looked for further more uh, support and help during this budget. Uh, like uh, MSME is supposed to be the growth engine, like you said. But I think something more should have been done for the MSME. Because uh, I think the expectations were much higher than what they are currently being given. Directly, the uh, tourism sector, which really does need the support, you know, after the COVID, uh, the, uh, uh, that would definitely help the small and uh, micro, you know, units. If the uh, transport infrastructure, and apart from that, the fill-up to the Prime Minister's Awas Yojana Ankle, which has been enhanced by 66 percent to over 79,000 crore rupees. How do we perceive this? move or this announcement by the Honorable Finance Minister? First of all, definitely it's a positive budget. No negative announcements are there. Uh, thankful to the upcoming 2024 uh, election. But overall, it's a good budget and especially the emphasis on the infrastructure and the housing. Uh, PM uh, Abbas Yojana uh, outlays increased uh, up to 79,000 crore rupees. I think this will give a positive, uh, positive view in the housing sector. Though our demand was to announce this uh, housing sector as an infrastructure status uh, given to this sector because the capital available at a very high rate to this sector. Uh, I think that was uh, not addressed in this. Hopefully in the coming uh, uh, time this will also be addressed. There were five major announcements for the middle class which the finance minister spoke about and before the budget also, a few days back, she said that I myself come from a middle class family. 25 lakh rupees, the limit which she has introduced. How do we see this? These are certainly very positive developments and announcements. <laughs> I think the budget is excellent. <clears throat> Some things were to be expected. There is an election next year. There is governance. There is a government on the move into, a move into action. And there is a definite intent <clears throat> which is being seen from time to time to translate its intents into action, which they feel are in the best interest of the economy and the people. And of course, always most importantly, the common man. Increase from five to seven lakhs that you touched is certainly uh, an excellent move. Reduction in personal tax rates across the board, including the surcharge which was very high in our case, leading to 42% plus tax on a certain level of income, which she rightly herself pointed out became one of the highest in the world. Uh, if I may say so, uh, financial uh, movement out of the country from certain extremely wealthy people who may find it difficult, and that's not India, that's a global phenomenon. People and money and business taxed on your turnover. It is not what is your net profit. So you have a certain turnover, you have a GST return, there is a certain fixed rate of tax on that, file, smile and go, pay the tax on your turnover. You don't even need to get a tax auditor. You only need to get it done if your income is below what would it would be under the presumptive tax. 
So we said you want simplification, you want ease of business, you want more people to comply. You want to have people joining the tax uh, family. So please increase this presumptive tax. And they have very